Well, I told myself after the long shot tier list I wouldn't do it again. But we're back with the handgun tier list. Now of the 20 on this list, I've used almost all of them extensively over the last four months. I've used Hellfire in a fire build, and Meridian with a detonation trigger. But I've never ranked them all. We've got 18 base handguns, two corrupted variants, and a new DLC weapon, so let's do this. All handguns ranked, which ones will end up in S tier, and which ones will end up at the bottom in D tier. Let's find out. Alright, first up we have the Silverback Revolver. Five rounds in the cylinder will make you feel like a real cowboy. I actually really like this weapon. The damage is nice and high, and the fire rate isn't too bad. You can easily take out the first few enemies, reload, and while the further enemies make their way towards you, well, you're already ready with the next five shots. I'll put this one solidly in B tier. There's better options, but not by much. Next on this list, let's talk about the other revolver in this game, and that is the Western Classic. Now this weapon doesn't have the raw damage like the Silverback, but it does make up for it in other ways. With a faster fire rate, faster reload speed, and just an extra bullet as well. You can fire this weapon just as fast as you can pull the trigger. Now, you wouldn't want to use this weapon on an elite enemy, as it's going to take a little while. But for clearing out the trash mobs, it'll get the job done. B tier as well. And I'd actually put it higher in the list than the Silverback. Number three on this list, we have the Cube Gun. Now this gun is interesting because, well, it has infinite ammo. The way this gun works is you fire your five cubes. Once they hit their targets, they bounce back into your weapon to be fired again. Now this works great on close and slow moving enemies as you get an insane fire rate going. But when you switch to a faster, further target, well, this gun severely lacks at that point. The built-in weapon mod lets you put up a shield absorbing up to 1400 damage. But that's kind of a weak mod in general. It's a fun gun for sure, but infinite damage doesn't make up for its shortcomings, so it's in C tier for me. After that, we've got the repeater pistol. Now, there isn't too much to say on this gun. It holds 15 rounds and has a fast fire rate, but that's about it. Sure, it has an open mod slot, but so does a lot of guns on this list. Its damage feels kind of low, and overall, it's just not really an exciting gun. I'm going to put this one in C tier as well. There's a lot of better options out there. Man, if you thought the repeater pistol was a letdown, let me tell you about the rusty repeater pistol. The starter gun for all remnant players. This gun is actually just the worst one on this entire list. It does about the same damage as the regular repeater, except this one has no mod slots and no mutators can be equipped on it. Man oh man is this gun terrible. As soon as you get any other handgun on this list, swap it out immediately and never look back. Okay, we need a pallet cleanser up to that last one. Let's talk about the rupture cannon. Now, I really like this one. It's part handgun, part shotgun, and it deals crazy high damage with a decent rate of fire. It's also able to equip any mod, so slot in whatever keeps it versatile. You just can't go wrong with this one. Plus, if I'm being honest, I kind of like the way this gun sounds when you fire it. This falls into A tier for me. All right, now we've got a little mini crossbow to go over. The Sorrow Mini Crossbow is really nice. If you hit weak points, you're doing an insane amount of damage here. Much like how the Crescent Moon Bow is broken as a main option, this one here is no different. This mod lets you rip your arrows out of still living targets to instantly reload your weapon and heal you for a bit. This gun just does it all, and should be given a chance by everyone. S tier weapon for me, love this one. Okay, for the next one, I can already see the YouTube comments. So we've got the Bolt Driver. This is a three round burst charged pistol. Now I don't like burst guns, and I really don't like guns that have to be charged to shoot. The damage on this is okay, I guess. It's not broken or anything, but I see this gun as a tedious mess in practice. It's not as bad as the Rusty Repeater, but it's in the same tier as it, D tier. Okay, next up we have the Star Shot. Now this is another one with a built-in mod. So the primary fire is quick with decent damage, kind of like the Rupture Cannon, another Nerudian weapon. But the mod itself is kind of lacking here. You can send off a mini explosion, but even with a proper explosive build, I just don't see the damage here. 
I like the primary fire. I hate the mod. C tier for me. So we have two weapons that are very similar up next. First off is the Hellfire Flamethrower. Now this thing is kind of a house. At close range, this weapon can ignite an entire group of enemies no problem. Well, there is one problem, and it's kind of a glaring problem. The range on this weapon is terrible. Past, I want to say, like, 8 meters, the flames won't even hit their target. This is an extremely close range weapon. And outside of fire bills that are all in on flame damage, I don't think this is a good fit for most players. I actually did a fire build, but I used Hot Shot and Flame Tornado as my mods. It's rough. I'm going to put this one in C tier. If you're all in on fire damage, you can argue it's B tier. The other thrower type on this list is the Nebula. This one swaps fire damage for corrosive. It suffers the same issue as the Hellfire, and that's the damage range. Now, I'm not going to repeat all my points from Hellfire a second time, but I will say I do love the mod on Nebula a lot. You can unleash a nano swarm of drones that attack and kill all enemies surrounding you. This mod is great, and I wish I could throw it on another weapon. That being said, it's also in C tier, unless you're all in on corrosive damage. If you've been around the channel before, you know I love this next one. The MP60 SMG is one of my favorite weapons of all time. Fast fire rate, good range, reload speed, and the damage is actually pretty good too. This one is just a solid all-around weapon, and everyone has access to it very early in the game as it's found in Ward 13. My only wish is a slightly bigger magazine. Would 60 rounds be pushing it? Mm, probably. But a man can dream. S tier either way. If you played Remnant 2 in the first few weeks that this game launched, you'll remember this one. The Enigma was the de facto broken weapon at the start. This used to be S tier not close, and nothing could even compete with it. But that's not the Enigma today. It's still usable and quite good in its current state, but man you just had to be there. Holding down the weapon sends out currents of electricity to your enemies. And a mod lets you tether them together for extra damage and distance. It's still a fun weapon to use, and I'll give it B tier in its current state. It's time for the first actual shotgun on this list. And that, of course, is the double barrel. Now, I kind of like this weapon. It's very efficient at deleting one enemy at a time. It can't really clear a room with this weapon. Well, you can, but you have to reload 14 times. For a shotgun, it's got actually pretty good range, and despite only having two runs on the barrel, it's a solid weapon. I put it in B tier. Okay, six guns left. Let's review the service pistol next. So what can you say about this one? This feels very similar to the repeater pistol, but that one has a 15 round magazine, and this one only holds nine. It's fast, it's accurate, but man, that small magazine in mid damage just keeps it locked away in C tier, right next to the repeater. So the Tech 22 actually surprised me. I used it a little in the beginning of the game for maybe a week or two, I don't know if it's been buffed since then or what, but I actually had a lot of fun with this one. It's very similar to the MP60 SMG, except that this is a full auto pistol. It's more accurate, it has a faster fire rate and reload speed than the SMG, but a 30 round magazine and just a little less damage. Honestly, I slept on this one a little too hard. I'm going to throw it in S tier, it's just as good as the MP60. And on the other end of the spectrum we have the Sure Shot. Now remember when I was gassing up the double barrel for cleaning up an enemy at a time before reloads? Uh, what the hell happened with this weapon? One shot before reloading means you're going to spend infinitely more time reloading your weapon than actually firing it. And its damage is pretty bad. I'd expect this to be a cannon with one round at a time, but that's not really the case here. D tier, get it away from me. For the next two weapons, we have the regular or corrupted version for each. The Rune Pistol's Corrupted version does insanely more damage, and comes with the Mini Hunter's Mark mod. While marked, you deal 10% more damage with any weapon, not just the Rune Pistol. And we also go from a Burst Pistol to something fully automatic. The Corrupted version is better in almost every way. Besides the MP60, this is the gun that I run most times when I'm just playing the game with no specific build restrictions. This one goes solidly into A tier. All right. Now the regular Meridian is kind of lame. Corrupted Meridian is a house. 
swapping grenades for mini rockets, you're more likely to hit your target. And I believe the damage is higher. Another weapon that can benefit from the explosion build. I also find it kind of funny that its weapon mod just stun locks enemies and your teammates in place until it's finished. If you're one of those trolley types, I'm sure you find this weapon amazing. It's a solid A tier weapon regardless, just watch out for splash damage in close quarters. Alright, the last weapon on this list is the Anguish Shotgun Pistol from the Awakened King DLC. So I had to reroll my campaign to get the side quest for this to spawn, and uh, not to brag, but my campaign seed had all six events spawn in a single roll. Okay, enough about that. Is this gun worth grinding? Kind of? So this gun has three fire modes, which makes it extremely versatile. Its normal shot is a close range shotgun blast that can one tap enemies. And if you charge your shot, it has more damage range. And instead of like the five pellets it shoots, it shoots one slug that also explodes after a short delay. Its mod turns it into a full auto SMG that detonates mini explosions that looks cool, but kind of weaker on the damage side. I think, it's, I think it shines more in lower difficulties, if I'm being honest. I think it belongs in B tier. C tier seems just a little too low. And there we have it, all handguns ranked from S to D tier. You could argue that anything here on this list could be raised or lowered one tier, sure. Except for D tier. I'll defend those three being trashed until my final breath. Alright, thanks for watching, some of you enjoyed, and I will see you guys on the next year. Happy 2024, everyone.